Hey, what's going on guys and welcome back to another video. So today we're going to be doing episode 15 of our Beginner to 2K guide. Since I've moved this series over to Voob uh, over to DE from Boobly, uh, we're starting to see you know different maps and different styles. I've went over some recorded games, I've done some live games. Today I figured I want to try something that is yet again different. Uh, I'm going to be going over one of my recorded games uh, and you know analyzing it. However, I'm going to be doing it from the perspective of purely my opponent. So I'm going to be doing you know, Fog of War on and only casting or only analyzing it from my opponent's perspective. Now this will make a little bit more sense once I introduce my opponent. So he's basically uh, an American 2K player, you know, 2K booby level. Uh, his name is Ink, he does stream. I will post his stream in the description. Great guy, uh, I've been playing this game for a while and I highly recommend you guys check him out. Um, so yeah, he's around 2K level and this is the level where it's like intermediate to advanced. They do a lot of stuff right. They know the builders, they know some complex ideas. However, there are still several mistakes that a lot of them repeat on a game to game basis. It's not something that they make once. It's something that it's kind of like a bad habit where they do it over and over again. And they're not quite sure why they're losing games. They're just falling behind slowly and slowly. So, uh, and you know, with this game, I'm gonna attempt to kind of hit on some of those uh, hit on some of those bad habits that a lot of these intermediate level players or intermediate to advanced level players uh, are making and hopefully uh, for you guys the audience uh, at whatever you know level you are you can potentially learn for some of the things they're doing wrong and try to fix them in your games as well because chances are a lot of you guys are making the same mistakes and we've all been there all right uh, so yeah without further ado let's just hop right into the video and check this one out Alright, so before we just you know hop right into the analysis, let's go over the map quickly, and then we'll turn on Fog of War, uh, and I'll show you guys the, uh, uh, and I'll show you guys you know just his perspective. So this map is called Sinos. It's pretty much like Arabia, but you have these pawns scattered around here, um, and it's going to be a Persian war. So again, it's mirror Civ, so we're not going to have any Civ variants. Uh, so it's really going to come down to who makes the better better decisions, who you know takes the better fights, and eventually wins the game. All right. So I'm not going to look at my map at all. I'm just going to go Fog of War here. And we're gonna play it um, as if uh, as if we're in his shoes. This we're playing it from his perspective. All right. Uh, you're gonna see us chatting a little bit here. Uh, this guy is, you know, he's been around my stream a little bit here. I've known him for a while off Boobly as well. Uh, and so, so, you know, some friendly chatter going on. Nothing too crazy though. All right. So uh, let me just talk about the Civ real quick here. Uh, maybe we'll fast forward the Dark Age as well. He's just gonna be going over a standard build. Let's cast this zoomed out a little. Eh, maybe like this is gonna be fine. Uh, so Persians now are actually a very solid Civ since they've got you know, a couple extra buffs. So they've got, first of all, the, the mainstream one, the Trash Expos, you know, only would cost the Expos. Really solid for late game. However, it doesn't really affect the game before like 40 minute mark, uh, at the very least. Uh, their other bonus that they get is that they get their TC bonus extended to the Feudal Age. So their TC works, I think, 5% faster in the Dark Age. Sorry, Dark Age, not Feudal. Uh, and that means that they get off to like a really solid start with pretty much an extra Villager over a generic Civ. Um, that, you know, that being said, Persians all, have always been a really versatile Civ in the Castle Age. Fully upgraded crossbows, knights that do really well against, um, you know, other archers. Camels as well, uh, very versatile. However, you know, maybe some problems in the Imperial Age when it comes to versatility there. Uh, but regardless, it's a Persian mirror. So, we'll, you know, might see some crossbows, might see some knights in Castle. And then eventually an imp, we'll see something like Halberdier, maybe Cav, uh, maybe Trash Expos. And, you know, on the off chance, some, some Paladins or... Most probably Hussar though. Okay, cool. So he's just, you know, taking in his boars, going over the standard build. And now around five minutes, once he's found all his turkeys, pulled in all his boars, he's going to go ahead and scout my opponent, uh, scout his opponent. Um, so let's take a look at his map. He's got two stones over on the side. First of all, let me just say his scouting is pretty good. You know, I definitely love his scouting. It's very thorough. He knows where all his mines are, all three mines, all two stones as well. And he sees, you know, a fair amount of where he can wall his map and, you know, the, uh, the options in terms of wood line. So he's going to go scout out his opponent now, which is obviously me. And he's going to find these two stones on the front. Uh, he's going to, you know, go about the scouting like normal. Uh, what's going through his mind right now is he needs to decide what he wants to do in terms of strategy. Uh, I can see him going up on 20 pop, so that can either indicate a really fast amount of arm rush or most probably a scout rush. So we're going to see what he goes for here. Uh, 20 pop with Persian, with Persian is extremely strong. Oh, and you guys saw that? He saw my barracks. Okay. So me putting up a barracks around 630. That's pretty indicative of me going men at arms. So he probably knows I'm doing men at arms now. And so you're gonna see him go up on 20 pop, but he actually sends a build to gold now. So I wonder, did he wanna go for men at arms from the start or did he adapt his build order 
based on me dropping the barracks, which is interesting. Um, if he did adapt, that's actually good good thinking on him. Um, you know, maybe he just wants to mirror my strategy, not fall behind to my men at arms. And so we'll just have to wait and see here what he goes for. But his his economy is very solid up to now. Four on wood, taking the sheep. And we can just fast forward a little bit through the dark age. Because he's not really getting too much more information. I right, notice how he's hovering my barracks. He really wants to see what I'm making. This is a smart move. I see a lot of players, they scout the barracks and they immediately assume the strategy. Uh, why assume when you can scout and know for sure? There you go. He hung around it a little bit more. Now he's like guaranteed 100% sure that I'm going to go, be going for men at arms. What I don't like here though, I'm already noticing a mistake. All right. So while I'm a fan of him scouting the barracks, I'm not a fan of him not scouting my base. What he should have done here was as soon as he scouted the barracks, run inside, use that 30 seconds to scout my base, and then come back around and check if I indeed am going for men at arms. Like this, he's still kind of blind. He doesn't really know where my resources are, and all he knows is that I have a barracks and I'm doing men at arms. It's good information, but he could be getting so much more out of the scouting time, all right? So definitely just the first mistake, I think, of this game. Um, but otherwise, not too bad for him so far. All right, so he's going to be going 20 pop men at arms, and I'm still in the dark age here, so what he should be doing right now is militia. He's going to go for the one range as well. So fairly standard stuff. I assume he got his wood upgrade as well. Staying on one lumber camp. So this is pretty much the one lumber camp build with one uh, range. Gets house, though. That's that's kind of unfortunate. Gets house at this time. But he's got the three men at arms, and I just hit the feudal age. So at this point, I'm wondering if he's going to move out or is he going to stay defensive? Uh, one thing, again, I don't like is kind of the same mistake as before, but it comes down to scouting once again. Uh, it just seems like the scout being here is doing absolutely nothing. I understand the militia being defensive. He knows I'm doing men arms, so it makes sense to keep his men arms defensively. Um, if, you know, if he doesn't want to move out, that's, that's up to him. But a scout should be constantly scouting, at least running back and forth between me and him, trying to find where my army is attacking him from. Because what if I loop my men arms now from here, ran them all the way around here, here through the fog, and end up on his woodline? In fact, he'd have no way of knowing that I was going to do that. Sure, it'd be a long path. Sure, it's unorthodox. But there is a possibility I can go for that. And him not scouting pretty much just leaves that opportunity open for grabs. All right. So just keep that in mind, guys, when you're playing. Don't idle your scout to try to keep it as active as possible. Because remember, at the end of the day, having all visible is a cheat code. And it's a cheat code for a reason. It gives you an unfair advantage. So I know we can't get all visible, but we can at least get whatever, you know, radius our, our scout gives us in vision. Uh, and so make sure you're using that to your advantage. Right now, it's doing absolutely nothing. Okay, just gonna transition into some archers here, and uh, he's he'll be, he'll be slowly walling up his map. So so far, uh, as far as build order goes, besides him getting housed, it's been pretty clean so far. Uh, he's spending his resources properly. You know, he's got enough on food to keep the TC production up. I would like to see a couple more farms. He's getting double bedox now. It's solid stuff. He's walling up. He's doing what he has to do. I just don't really like how he's limiting himself to playing on the defensive instead of being proactive with his scout. And you know, maybe that will will come back to bite him in the ass in a second here. Alright, just kind of scrolling around his base here. Maybe I'll zoom out a tad. Well, it's a little far actually. Maybe I'll just keep it like this. Yeah, cool. Alright, and now I'm starting to launch my attack here. I was kind of chilling at home for a little bit until um, I was fully walled, I, I believe. Um, but yeah, now I'm coming forward with my four men arms, and luckily, you know, luckily for him, I didn't go around uh, the back. Like I said, I went down the middle, and you know what? He gets rewarded for camping out. He gets a good trade. Uh, however, I still stand by my uh, my thought process that he shouldn't have kept the scout defensively because now he lost the scout, and you know what? So what if he won the fight? He still has really very little information on what I'm doing. I could be fully walled. I could be switching into skirmishers. I, he's got no information whatsoever. Whereas as far as you know, my vision goes, we can't see it, but you can assume that I know, and I know a fair bit more. I know he's going on ranges. I know he's got the gold forward. Um, I, I know a fair bit more than what he knows about my map. So just definitely keep that in mind. Can't stress it enough. The scouting is very important. Okay, so now he's getting his TC up, and, and you know he's just doing the standard build. One okay, there's one other mistake I'm noticing here. All right, so notice his wood is starting to pile up. Let's see how far that goes. If he drops the blacksmith now, it's fine. 
But if he drops farms in like a couple seconds, that's not fine. You need to drop the farms as soon as you get the wood in the bank. It's floating to like 150, 200 wood. If you're not planning to make a building with it, it's actually just bad. And that's actually what slows down your, your castle time, not making the farms fast enough. A lot of people do not know that. That's probably one of my my best my best tips. Uh, he's gonna drop a blacksmith, so it looks like I talked too soon. This is fine. Although, in my opinion, it's a little soon. Uh, you definitely need more farms than this to be able to go for the blacksmith. So that's some, maybe some build order errors from him. Uh, I, I would I would have loved to see like three, maybe four, four more farms before that blacksmith goes down. Regardless though, he's going to attack me with his archers. And uh, well, lo and behold, I am fully walled. Because obviously he didn't scout me, so um, I had no pressure on me. And I felt, you know, I could just easily fully wall this. I do like what he did with his archers here. Try to get some pressure. But once again, he's just playing completely in the dark. I have He doesn't know where my stable is. Where my stable, where my archer range you never know what I'm going to go for behind this, you know what I mean? It, it could be uh, it could be nothing, it could just be me fast castling, you never know. And so that's why I really can't stress the point of scouting enough here. Uh, looks like fetching is research. Let's keep an eye on this economy. Alright, he's getting now a defensive tower. Ooh, let's, let's talk about this one here. I think this is coming down to his lack of scouting. Again, once again, uh, this is going to be the title of the video, Lack of Scouting and what it does to you. Uh, but seriously, he's making a tower at home. I understand that his gold is, is exposed here, but there's right now no reason he should be getting this tower except for the fact that he's scared. And why is he scared? It's like real life. We're scared of the unknown. He doesn't know what I'm going to be going for here. And that is the only reason he's making a tower. He doesn't know where my army is. He doesn't know if I'm making ranges, a stable, if I'm going up. Like I said, he's really, really scared uh, of of his lack of information on my base. And this is why he's making that tower. Uh, what would be better is if he ran his scout inside, saw where I'm, you know, making my, how I'm laying out my economy, how I'm, you know, allocating my villages, what I'm trying to do, uh, and then make inf inf uh, make decisions based on that information. Now he's kind of playing blind, and he's over investing in the defense that won't actually serve him much good. All right, so walling up and making a tower, and so far I've got no military uh, on the map to even defend. I finally show my hand though. And I've got two archers with no fletching and well, you know, this could either be me, you know, playing poorly and not having the military to defend or it could be me really valuing my economy over my military and we'll see if it, you know, costs me. Um, so he sees the blacksmith now, he sees only two archers, probably indicates only one range, gets a villager so really well, well done from, from him right there. Uh, and notice that he's playing very aggressive on me now because his build with the fletching is very oriented uh, to early aggression, alright, so... I really like this move from him. He's not kind of like breaking in and running back. He's going in, he's taking the risk, and he's trying to find out what damage he can do. Because remember, he saw my archers without fletching, so he knows he's got some sort of window to attack me. Looks like I potato the wall there a little bit. Yeah, I mess up the wall. Um, I end up walling up behind it, but you know, he still gets some harass off. And now he finally is getting information on my base. So he knows there's a range somewhere, he knows there's a blacksmith, and he knows he killed a villager. Okay. He's still getting good trades here, so he, he got an archer before. Yeah, he got an archer and a build before. He's now getting a second archer. He's getting really good trades here. And his, uh, his early aggression, I think, has paid off for him. Uh, the scores are quite close, but mainly due to scouting, I, I would say. Alright, what he should do now is regroup his army. Uh, there's no point of keeping only three range units together. He needs to bring in these, uh, these units and group them up with these units. And that way, seven, that's now a very powerful army. I like the fact that he's mixed in a couple scrims, it makes it a lot harder for me to engage his army. And he's also got an armor, so this army right now is very, very strong in terms of feudal age, alright? And uh, he's making good use of it as, as well. He's idling my farms a little bit, kicking me off the super line, and remember, he did get that one villager. Alright, now at home, what is he planning to do? So, ooh, I don't like this. I don't like this, and I'll explain why in a second. He's actually making a stable at home. And I was just checking to see how many farms he had, because at this point, he should be trying to go castleage. Uh, that's the best best follow-up to early game pressure, I think, is if if both players end up being fully walled here, the best thing to do is to go up to the castle age, because even if he invests into scouts now, even if he invests into more range units, chances are I'm, I'm well defended here. My TC's here, I'm, wall, I'm walled up. He's not going to get much damage in Feudal Age. Him investing into the stable just tells me that he's he just wasted 175 wood, which should have been farms, and if he makes any scouts, that's just going to be wasting food and delaying castle age. Plus in Castle Age, chances are you want to be going Expo as well. 
you don't want to make the switch into knights simply because um, you won't have the time to master them. The expo have already been you know massed in feudal age from both of us, and so switching into knights wouldn't make too much sense. Uh, it'd be much better to just upgrade your archers that you've been massing off feudal age. So this stable is very wrong for multiple reasons there, and we'll see if he commits to any scouts here. But I think he shouldn't. I think the best thing to do is to go up to castle stage now. And to just follow up with the with the archers that you spent all feudal age investing into, like if you wanted to make a, a knight transition, you don't get the armor, for example. If you really want to make the knight transition, although I definitely think that crossbow and you know opening in castle age, definitely the way to go here. All right, so I sense this opportunity to get some so get some ground back. Uh, I notice his uh, his army is kind of just idling here, so I move out. I end up trading one archer for one archer. Not the you know not the end of the world, not the biggest deal for either of us here. I like the constant harass from him, although I can't help but think that the stable is going to cost him the game, or at least cost him some advantage uh, over here. One thing you can notice though, since you know we don't have the most amount of vision on my base, we can tell from the score that I've clicked up, my score has dropped significantly um, in the past couple of minutes, so we can just assume that I've clicked up for a while now, because I've had a low score for a while, and there it is, I'm in the castle age here, and uh, now Ink has to trade, he has to trade, it's quite clear I'm going expo there, uh, expo right now. So a little bit of micro from both of us and he needs to trade as much as possible use these units to trade or to run but since he's so far committed he should just trade his army i think that's what he might you know go ahead and do and at this point at home he's got to make a decision does he invest more into expo or does he uh switch into knights completely all right so a little bit of micro actually a mistake for me and a good move from him to force the fight now before my upgrades kick in and he gets a reasonable trade here he ends up losing his army, but like I said, it's it's buying him time, and he's getting a reasonable trade. Okay? Uh, so now, like I said, he's got to make a decision at home. Does he continue to mass archers, or does he switch into cavalry, which it seemed like it was his plan the whole time. Oh, I don't like that he's he's had to move his lumber a lot here. He was taking lumber here, now he's moving it here. Because he's scared of my crossbows, and once again, it comes down to just being scared of a threat that isn't real. I, I know I have crossbow. But they're here. They're not here. They're not close to this woodline. So I don't think he should have switched all his bills one shot. If anything, switch maybe half right now in preparation. And now he's getting a tower here to defend. It seems like he's playing against the, you know, just the thought of me attacking instead of what I'm actually going to be attacking with. Although this tower I don't mind. I just wish it was a little bit higher up. You know what I mean? So it can actually defend something. I move up. I move back. We don't really know what I'm up to right now. He doesn't know. Again, the stable, he's made absolutely nothing from it. Keep an eye on the stable. I swear it's going to be his demise. Uh, he's made absolutely nothing from the stable. And I know it's not a big deal for most players. Uh, you know, you're probably thinking just 175 wood. But here comes another one. And these 175 woods are adding up. So let's see if he makes use of the stable. But, like, if you're going to go for stables, don't also go for skirmishers. You know what I mean? you got to pick one. Uh, either you make the calf switch or you make skirmishers and you go on two ranges. Uh, and, and him making... Uh, a little bit of everything here with making skirmishers and making the stables. He's, it seems like he's not going to get a whole lot done here. He's kind of just kind of like tip, uh, sorry, dip his toe into, you know, each each line of units, and then not actually commit to either of them. All right, his economy is not the best. So let's think about let's think about it logically. Let's let's, let's do some math here um, about what he's trying to do. So let's pause here and think about it. So I've got seven archers. We don't know anything else about what I'm doing. But we do know that I've been in the cast stage for about three minutes now, so we can assume that I've got multiple TCs down and that he is behind an economy. He has 12 farmers, and he wants to be able to afford skirmishers and knights from two stables. Now, knights are expensive. They cost 60 food apiece, and a skirm costs 25 food, if I'm not mistaken. You cannot afford this on 12 farmers. It takes already six or five farmers to maintain build production from one TC. So that another six farmers only to maintain two stable knight production? Simple math tells us that's impossible. Um, and so simply, what he's trying to do here just doesn't make sense. And this is where he starts to fall behind massively. Before this, it was kind of an even game. And if anything, I preferred his position, you know, attacking me constantly, forcing uh, me to react, and even getting a villager. And now, all of a sudden, even if, um, you know, he did get the better feudal age, it just seems like his cast age is instantly lost because of his, um, you know, poor choice of units here. Now he's going to make two knights with no upgrades. Five skirmishers with a lot of upgrades, but again, only pumping out of one range. Uh, I see the skirms and decide to run away. Again, I only have seven crossbows here, so it's not the biggest army. Uh, this is more of like a harass group, and I'm most likely booming behind this. 
Uh, or if not, if I wasn't booming, he would have probably seen a forward siege from me. Um, but yeah, so far he only sees these seven crossbows here with with regular upgrades. Nothing, nothing too crazy here. And again, he's making some knights, but he's gonna realize very quickly that you actually cannot afford these knights. And uh, you notice he's got no upgrades on these because he simply just can't afford. <laughs> he can barely afford production, let alone upgrades here. Put up on two TCs, and once again he's uh. He's nice getting picked off by my crossbows, no upgrades. I see some micro on this hill now. At this point, look at look at the, the expo, how, how dominant they come out of this fight. And even though Skrims counter expo, he just doesn't have the mass of them. Why? Because he doesn't have uh, enough production. He's got only one range. And so he's wasting a few units. He simply cannot take the fights. And me only making one unit lets me focus all my upgrades on that unit, getting Balkan plus one, uh, and then just massing it up. And that's what you should do in early castle and not trying to make you know, too many units and not upgrading either of them. Uh, assuming, by the way, in another situation where he had 25 farmers you know, after an extended feudal, then sure, go ahead, make skirms and make knights. But in this particular situation where you wanted to go up fast to castle age, you simply cannot afford that. Alright, so now I'm pushing in and you can see how fast his, his, his base is crumbling here. He's got 700 gold now. The crossbows are coming in. His skirms aren't enough to defend it. His knights aren't enough to defend it. He hasn't even attacked me once since Castle Age. And I've been pretty much 5 minute free booming in, in the Castle Age. And we'll check out what, what my base looks like at the end of this game. He makes a good decision here. He sends his knights out. Finally, he wants some sort of counterplay. Is it late? Yes, we can tell by the score. He's a thousand score behind. So it is probably a little bit late, but it's better late than nothing. And I think the idea to go counterattack is the correct one. All right, his knights again, no upgrades. They get caught by my expo and I'm just kind of in the right place at the right time. I think I want to sneak attack with the expo on this side, end up catching his uh, his knights. At home, you know, I'm just kind of chilling. He's kind of chilling. And these knights don't amount to a whole lot here. They end up getting cleaned up like that. And so now he sees my second DC, he sees a lot of farms. He can only assume how strong my economy is. Um, and, and his economy is in complete shambles. Now, a thousand gold. Anybody wondering why is he floating so much gold? Simply because he, he doesn't have the food to be able to spend the gold on knights, which he wanted to. And he kept his gold on, uh, he kept his bills on gold. What he should have done was transition them off gold onto wood or onto food. Um, and now he simply just doesn't have uh, the economy to keep up with me. Sure, maybe he can clean up my army. Sure, now skirmishers can counter a crossbow and they can shine on the battlefield. Uh, but you know, even if he, even if I delete all my crossbow, even if he kills them and loses nothing, he's still left with only skirmishers that don't do a whole lot to my economy. And now my economy has been untouched for uh, what is that? Almost ten minutes now. You know, surely the game is going to be lost. And once again, the gold's floating. So I always tell people at all levels, always spend your resources in castle. It's just the best advice I can give you. Uh, and my opponent here simply just isn't doing that. All right, so. He's focusing on the micro, which is fine. He's not doing a bad job with the micro. The problem is now everything's idle. He's got two TCs idle. He's got two stables idle. He's got resources floating, almost 2k uh, resources floating. Um, and just not spending that makes makes it just go to waste. Because having extra resources at this stage of the game, um, it just doesn't do any good for your position. He's still losing vills on this side. Still giving up control of the map on this side. And as you can see, the, the game falls apart pretty quickly for him uh, just because once again making that bad decision at early castle to switch into the knight so at this point he starts to realize his eco is too far behind he's not able to spend that five that 1500 gold that he's piled up and, and the whole game is crumbling down on him and, and you know besides having this whole economy mess besides not being able to push out of his base look at the map he's got no vision this is not a position you ever want to be in you're just stuck defending all game you know, you don't know where I can hit next, then uh, he simply can't deal with it. You see him pushing out with the skirms, and every time he pops out one area, I simply just run away and, and go attack somewhere else. So it's a nightmare for him. He's made two towers that didn't do much, two stables that didn't do much, and two ranges that were good, but not enough, unfortunately. And now we can pretty much fast forward the rest of this game because he's got nothing, and there's no way he can possibly win from this position. So let's go ahead and fast forward here um, just to see the rest of the game play out. Uh, but it's pretty clear that the game is over at this point. Uh, and it's been over for a while here. And now I get the Imperial Age and he calls the GG. So let's continue to look at the map here. Before I look you know, at my base and what kind of setup I have, let's quickly recap some of the mistakes he made and some of the good things he did. Because like I said, this guy's 2k level. There are definitely a lot of good things that he's done. 
uh, and maybe I just haven't given him enough credit for it. So from the Dark Age, we saw that his Dark Age was good. He knew exactly what to do. His scouting was good in Dark Age, except for when he was at my base and he didn't scout inside my base. He kind of just stayed on the outskirts of it. Um, his builder in early feudal was nice. Maybe some tweaks to the builder inside feudal. He could have upped the cast age faster had he seeded more farms. Uh, but the mistakes start to pile up when he made that stable in feudal age that he didn't even use. And then he went up to cast age, added a second one. Again, barely even used. Uh, and then, you know, dropped two towers because he was far behind. And that just led to him being more and more behind. And he simply wasn't able to compete with my army or my economy. So let's, for the first time this game, take a look at what I had, what my base was looking like. So as you can see, this was my initial TC. I've got plenty of farmers. I had my third TC out here. I was sticking on two range production, only two ranges, no stables. All right, I was sticking on two, two ranges for the longest of times. I only made these stables when I hit up to the Imperial Age. I'm collecting relics. I've got full vision. Can I switch to my perspective here? That could be very interesting. I wanna, what, I can't compare the vision, but uh, my vision, look how spread out my, my base is. Right, I have, I have very, very good uh, vision all over the map. I'm starting to move out here, making my buildings on the front. My army is on the front, you know, near his base, taking my skull on the side. Uh, and now maybe my next step is to expand on and take castles and put castles on the hills here, or at least, you know, switch into some Hussars, which is what I was gonna go for, uh, and really start raiding him even further. So uh, again, it wasn't a lot of mistakes that really separated this game from being at 5.5K score and being at 3.4k score. It really just came down to me making only one unit and sticking to it and you know booming out instead and him trying to dip his toe into a lot of different units and end up not even doing any of them properly. Okay, I can't stress this enough. And, and then the next point in, in this in this game that we can take a look at is really just his scouting compared to mine. Uh, I pretty much had the initiative the whole game because I was the guy scouting, I was the guy looking um, to see what my opponent's doing and he just Kind of gave up the map. Uh, the one thing he did really good, though, I think, was his his uh, early game pressure in Feudal Edge. You know, he stuck around my woodline, he harassed me. As soon as he broke in, he ran straight inside my base. He killed a villager and he harassed my second woodline. That was when I was in the most danger all game. Had he followed that up with a second range and went for just crossbows and castle instead of making that stable, I think this game could have been very different. He might have still lost, but it sure as hell wouldn't have been this uh, this much of a gap and, and you know just in castle age so definitely keep it in mind that you don't want to make these transitions too early you want to be able to play smart and you want to be able to set up your economy in such a way uh, where you're able to always you know have a solid economy behind a, a very solid unit option as well you don't want to be sacrificing economy to make military or sacrificing military to make economy you need to find that nice little bal uh, balance that harmony between the two and that's pretty much what I did in this game compared to my opponent all right, guys, so this is something a little bit different. I don't know if it's going to be good. Let me know honestly in the comments what you guys think about this video. Uh, maybe I can go back to my main screen here. You know, let me know what I did well in this video, what I did poorly in this video in analyzing the game. I hope you guys did learn how important it is to scout your opponent and how important it is to follow up your early aggression with smart decisions and uh, make sure you're not over committing to something, you know, a different unit or a unit that won't actually translate into some more advantage in Castle Age or in later on in the game. Uh, Alright, let's quickly, because I know you guys like it, take a look at the st statistics here before I end off this video. Uh, so military, economy, technology, and society. Uh, look at that vill difference, look at the economy difference as well, and even the military difference. Pretty much everything in favor of me, uh, just from a few you know, good fights, good micro fights from me, and a few poor decisions from my opponent. Uh, and like I said, I don't think he played that bad. I think he did a lot of things right. I just think that he um, missed out on a couple ideas and it really cost him. And I was pretty much able to punish him. At this level, any top 10 player would be able to you know, punish at, at, this, uh, you know, at this level, I think. Uh, all right, so let me know what you guys think about this video in the comments. Seriously, I'm looking for any feedback. Just trying out some new things. Uh, my hope was that you guys can see what it's like to play um, you know, at an intermediate level or versus a higher level player. And some of the things that even 2K Vubli players uh, are doing right and doing wrong. So, like I said, hopefully you guys learned something. Let me know what you guys think about this style. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.